what, what's your excitement level now knowing you get to call games for a team that is going to be a Super Bowl caliber team again? Yeah, certainly the Packers are going to be relevant. When you have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers, you always are relevant. And so, uh, yeah, we look forward to it because, you know, uh, not only do we want to see the Packers win, but we want to see them win because we get to see really good games uh, on a big stage. And that's what the Packers have been in the last 30 years. It's been uh, it's been great. It's been an honor to be around just to watch Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers over the last uh, 20 some years. Is this the way you saw things going? I know it had been trending this way the last couple of weeks, but there was a time last summer when it looked like there was a less than zero chance that we'd be here for the for last season, much less future seasons. Yeah, no, I was in the camp of I thought the last year was the last dance, as uh, Devontae and Aaron said in their famous now famous uh, uh, tweet that I thought this was kind of the last dance for a number of reasons, not the least of which is the fact the Packers have, uh, you know, issues with the salary cap. But um, what they've done is they've decided to go all in and make sure that Aaron Rodgers is in the fold. And I'm sure Devontae Adams is next and Jair Alexander. And, you know, the key to the salary cap, the whole thing is, is about keeping your best players. And you mix and match with everyone else, but you keep your best players. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers is one of their best players, certainly a Devontae Adams, Jair Alexander. And I'm sure before long, you'll see Devondre Campbell possibly and, um, you know, Rasul Douglas. Yeah, as uh, Goody said a couple of weeks ago, this is kind of the first domino. And now suddenly we're seeing seeing things happen really fast. Um, what, what do you, As far as Rodgers goes, Wayne, what do you, what do you think changed in terms of how last summer went and he, he was uh, upset about a myriad of things. And it just seems like the, the relationship between him and Brian and the front office in general is in such a better spot now than it, than it was nine months ago. Yeah, it really is Brandon. And you know, the difference between the loss to Tampa Bay and the NFC championship, the feel you had uh, for Aaron and the front office um, was totally different. 180 degrees different uh, after the loss to San Francisco this year. You, you saw two sides that really wanted to see if they could make things work. And, and um, you know, I, I think you saw a, a lot of good feeling between the two sides. Uh, you've got to give, really, the Packers a lot of credit on this, the Packers brass, uh, because they certainly went to, to work on this relationship. Uh, Aaron Rodgers was open to, uh, to that change in a relationship. And so, you know, I think all parties considered – um, this was a very good season for them, and I think they got closer together. They figured out how to uh, to work with each other uh, the most effective way. And so by the time you got to the end of the season, it was now a matter of how are we going to keep this going? How are we going to make this work? And that was uh, that was kind of different from what you saw the previous year. Is there do you think more pressure on them now to get over the hump in the playoffs? Because the, the, the script for the last couple of years, as you well know better than anyone, has been incredible regular season success and then not getting it done playoff time. Now added pressure, do you think, given that they're uh, running it back again this year? Well, certainly uh, you, there's no question. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, anxious people on the outside looking in. But I think if you're uh, part of the football team and this club, and when they put their team together, they'll go into the season with a lot of confidence, knowing that they've been capable of, of going all the way the last couple of years. They've been one of those teams. And I think they'll still be that way, depending on how it all breaks down, how you fit everybody under the salary cap, that type of thing, who comes back, who doesn't. You're going to have to make some sacrifices. But in general, uh, this team will have an opportunity to grow and, yes, get over that hump and, and to, uh, you know, Brian Gutekunst was asked uh, last week at the scouting combine, what do you have to do to get over the hump? I mean, uh, do you have to make changes, that type of thing? He said, no, I think we've got everything. We just need to play better in those moments, in those situations, like the NFC Championship game, like the divisional uh, playoff game. And I think, uh, you know, this group they'll try to run it back with certainly is more than capable of getting to the Super Bowl and winning it. It's a matter of performing your best uh, on the day you have to win a football game to advance. From your experience, having been around the NFL for so long and having been around so many great teams, what is it do you think that sets those teams, the championship teams, apart from the rest? There seems to be some people that think they're kind of of the one player away philosophy or kind of like Brian said, like you alluded to a couple of weeks ago, it's all there. We just have to, you know, it has to bounce our direction. Is, do you lean one way or the other in, term of, in terms of that? 
you know, I don't think it's about talent. I don't think it's about X's and O's. Um, I think there comes a time when it's your turn, when it's your year. And you can also, you know, the players and the coaches and everyone in the organization, they feel like, okay, we're going to make it our year. But you know what I found? And I've been around the, you know, Super Bowl teams like the 85 Bears and the 2010 Packers, and I've watched teams closely. Um, there's something mystical about a Super Bowl run. It just it doesn't happen. And it, it's, it's so hard to make it happen. Well, we want to be playing our best football and et cetera, et cetera. You know, you, certainly all of that is true. And yes, there's certain the coaching comes into play and talent comes into play. But when it's all said and done, when you get down to the short strokes in late January, a lot of it's mystical. It's almost about, is this your turn? Is it your year? And the only thing you can do as a team and as an organization, it's kind of like what the Kansas City Chiefs went through. For years and years, they were knocking on the door, and then they finally broke it down. And I think that's where the Packers are right now. They're good enough to get to the doorstep. They're good enough to knock on the door. Now they've got to knock it down. And, you know, maybe it'll be their turn next year. Who knows? But I do think that last ingredient to championship has nothing to do with X's and O's. It's how people come together. It's do they get the breaks of the game? Is it mystically maybe their chance, their opportunity to win? And, you know, that's really, I, I know that sounds crazy. I know the football people don't like that kind of talk because it's something they can't really control. But um, there is a mystical aspect to championship teams on this level, especially in a one and done tournament. It's not a best of seven. Yeah, it's that very well said, I thought. Um, the, speculating a little bit on this, but do you think Aaron maybe looked at how things went with Brett in his last couple of years here and him leaving for a new team and the way some fans kind of turned on him there for a while and it, it maybe hurt his legacy. Do, do you think that Aaron maybe looked at that as he made his decision and said, you know, I have a chance here to be a lifelong Packer and I don't want to pass that up. You know, he's always wanted to be that uh, in the last, you know, ever since, uh, well, I've known him really from the beginning and, and it's been the honor of my career to have called every single play he snapped. They've snapped the ball to him on, uh, you know, he's simply a, a great, great player and quarterback. And I, I really love him as a person. Um, and I, he's always, Brandon, he's always told me he's wanted to finish his career as a Green Bay Packer. I do think it means something to him. And I do think that's a factor as to why he was open to a, a, a new relationship or a renewed relationship with the organization. And, and um, you know, I, I think it's important that he finish uh, as a Green Bay Packer. And Gosh, I'm glad he's going to get a chance to do that based on what we know of the contract. We don't know the details. Uh, I'm sure that what we've heard in generalities is not the, you know, what the final verdict will be. But it certainly appears to me that the organization has made a commitment and he's made a commitment to the organization to play this out and finish his career in Green Bay. And the best way to do that would be with a Super Bowl uh, victory coming up in the next year or two. Last one, and then I'll, I'll let you go. But I'm curious uh, what you think happens next for Jordan Love now, having been through, had a front row seat for the Favre-Rogers situation, which seemed to work out differently than this one has worked out now between Rogers and Love. I mean, where do you think they might go as far as uh, number 10 is concerned now? Well, I, I think they'll continue to develop Jordan Love. Um, you know, again, it's the National Football League. You, you never know what injuries could happen, and they can happen at the quarterback position. So you want to have somebody who's well-versed in your system, who you brought up through your system, and and um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. But initially, if you're just asking me as an outsider looking in, I think they continue to develop Jordan Love this year, this coming season. And if he has to play, maybe he'll be really ready to play. I, I thought he showed some promise last year in that Kansas City game in the fourth quarter he played down in Kansas City under adverse circumstances. Um, you know, I think he's a prospect. They Certainly, they drafted him in the first round. They moved up in the first round to get him. I know they like his ability level. They wouldn't have done that if he wasn't didn't have ability. And now they'll continue to develop that ability. And I think Tom Clemens, by the way, um, coming on as quarterback's coach, I don't think that move was made just for Aaron Rodgers' purposes. I think that move was made because Tom Clemens can really teach a young quarterback and bring up a young quarterback in this league. And I think that's going to be a, a major part of his uh, presence on the coaching staff this coming season at Jordan Love.